Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Titans. A lot of stuff went down in this episode, so let's break it down. It's been three months, and it's kind of interesting to get to see where everyone kind of is after these three months. Obviously, first off, let's start off with uh, the Titans. The, you know, Titans 2.0, Titans uh, next, New Generation, Next Generation, whatever the case you want to call them. Uh, it is interesting seeing both Jason and Gar fighting and Jason's blindfolded and everything. It's like, oh, look at him. He's actually being pretty dope. But at the same time, like, oh, wow. Even though he's not using his powers, Gar's actually pretty good at holding his own. And then all of a sudden, like, he gets advantage and he whacks Jason on the back. And Jason's like, what are you doing? He's like, what? You told me not to hold back. And also, it's not like Gar went nuts. But I guess for him, it's like, no, 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 no. Like, it's supposed to be a little bit more of a fair fight or whatever, I guess, is what he was thinking. It was just supposed to be like, no, nah, like, you know, I mean, it seemed like he handled his own. So I was like, oh, Jason's kind of into you. But it's like, oh, nope, never mind. He obviously he's still a little rough around the edges and whatnot with this whole situation, so it's kind of interesting. Um, and I like too that we are still kind of dealing with the ramifications of everything that went down with Trigon because even like Gar's like, you notice that Dick's kind of like super nice to me. It's like, yeah, probably because he feels kind of bad about the whole killing me thing. It's like, yeah, it does that make it better? I'm curious, like, because Gar said it didn't. Is it just because it makes him go, you're kind of treating me differently, or is it supposed to be the thing of like, I know it wasn't you, but still, it's just it is still a little weird. Even with you being super nice to me, it's still weird. Or maybe it's just kind of like, nah, just be normal and. You know, you're just making things more awkward by you just being overly nice or whatever. But it's actually interesting, too, because for Rachel, she, you know, is trying her best with this whole situation because because everyone is different from this situation. And, like, it, things change. Rachel definitely changed, but she doesn't know 100% in what ways. And I think we're slowly seeing that kind of creep out where she was kind of asleep. And then that power of her start wrapping around her, even to the point she felt her side and her scratch marks. Like, her power is literally, I think, clawing at her. Like, I think it's it's too much. She hasn't come in tune, isn't fully in tune with it yet. So it's literally going to try and kill her to either escape. Kind of like the dark side. I mean, the, to be fair, everything you saw of her in season one, that was kind of her plus her dad. But I'm wondering, is it kind of like, oh, you've buried this dark side, but it's clawing to get out or whatever. I'm interested to see because because we do know, like, you know, once again, I everything I ever talk about Titans is pulled from Teen Titans because that's my knowledge of the Titans. I don't know the comic books like that. But the thing in the cartoon was always that Raven has to keep her emotions in check because, you know her powers are tied to her emotions so maybe that i mean we've seen that be the case when she's angry and frustrated obviously like her powers kind of in particular connected to her negative emotion to be fair her powers are also connected to the positive ones too that's been showcased a lot of different instances but i think maybe you know it's all just kind of going wild until she learns how to control i wonder will it ever because like obviously like in the comic books and stuff or in tv shows is like a lot more magic base, you know, the you know, Azeroth, Metreon, Zinthos type of situation. Will that ever apply? Probably not. It's just it, the power is what it is type of thing of like there's no necessary magic. It's just her power. But maybe she gains control of it like that. I, I'm interested to see where they go, especially with, like I said, with that whole like it seems like it's literally trying to kill her potentially, you know. There's uh, the mysterious girl Rose because at first I was like because I you know watching the trailer I was like I kind of keep forgetting whether or not she's actually Slade's kid or at least one of them or whether she was just kind of adopted into the family or whatever but then like she had superhuman abilities so I was like okay so she's not a hundred percent human it's Slade's not technically a metahuman I mean my experience with Slade is obviously Teen Titans but also Arrow he's not a metahuman in Arrow it was just like the Mirakuru so obviously Arrow takes his own liberties but i think he technically is a metahuman or maybe it is just exp you know it might if, I'm, I'm, i forgot there was a death battle between him and deadpool a couple a while back but i don't remember the rundown about deathstroke whether like it might be experiments that made him the way he is either way um but it's interesting because like it didn't even click in my head of like, oh yeah, she has rapid healing. And I was like, it wasn't until the end of the episode when they were like, oh yeah, that's definitely Slade's kid. And I was like, oh, right, 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 right. Because I forgot Slade has a healing factor too. I only knew about that because of um, Death Battle. Because I was like, right. Because he has a crazy healing factor as well. Because it turns out like, because uh, Gar had talked about it when uh, 
Dick was changing her bandage for her eye, like, her eye was completely gone, but the wound had already closed up, because, like, I guess the moment her eye got cut out, which, the bandage was still bloody, so it had to be fairly recently, maybe? Either way, um, that's good, but, like, the fact is, like, she's on the run, and it seems like, because she kept being like, oh, yeah, you need to stay away from this guy, which is interesting, because she doesn't know that the Titans have a past with Deathstroke. Once again, we don't know 100% what that past is, you know, what that ties in with Batman and whatnot, but it's, it's still kind of interesting that these two people were brought together almost by fate and destiny, you know, because, you know, because Rachel brings up the fact is that Dick is, you know, he's the type of person to bring in, you know, a bird with a broken wing. He just, he can't bring himself to not, you know, it's like, I guess, you know, also stemming from that situation too, he came, he was a kid with a broken wing as well, you know, he lost his parents, Bruce top brought him in and that was a whole, you know, thing in itself, you know, and now like Dick wants her to stay, but obviously she doesn't because she doesn't want anyone to get killed because of her. It's like he will come after me and he'll kill all of you, which shows that like obviously she doesn't want innocent people to be killed in everything. But the thing is like, why is he coming after her so desperately? I would actually forgotten because I literally said it earlier. It's like, right, it's been three months because I was like, yeah, Deathstroke literally just came out of like, you know, hiding or whatever, like, uh, or uh, retirement. So I'm like, why do you, how do you jump on this so quick? I said, oh, because once again, it's been three months. So he's had time to track her down. So I'm curious, does she even know that that's her dad? I'm, I'm assuming she does. And, but still, why is she running from him? What does he want for her? Does he want her to be just like him or what? Cause that's the thing, like I said, like why now after like these, you know, that time skip of the three months, like why then? Like, was he? Did he not go after her prior to learning that the Titans were backing off? I'm curious. Or I don't, not unless this is all supposed to be some ploy or something like to get her close. Maybe that's going to be the thought people have of like that's Deathstroke's kid. Why did you bring her here? You know that type of thing. Once, every, well, because they figured it out. Well, at least Jason and Guard find out at the end of the episode. Obviously, Jason would know. So it must mean that a Batman has crossed paths with Deathstroke in the time that like Jason's been kicked. Because Jason's only been with uh, Bruce for like a year. So he must have crossed paths. Or at the very least, he's well versed in a lot of like Bruce's enemies. You know, so it, it, it makes you wonder with that whole um, situation. But once again, I, like I said, I like that parallel, that aspect of this season of being like, Dick is trying to train the kids up, uh, kind of like stepping into that role, doing what Bruce did for him. And it's like for him, he, you know, he wants to help someone. He basically he even explained it to Rachel, like the main reason for bringing back the Titans is to give people like Rachel and Gar special people like them somewhere that they can call home because like being on their own out there in the world didn't work. So that's why he's trying to help Rose, too, because it's like going alone and that's something he learned you know he had to learn last season of like going alone isn't something that you can do or should do you should be with a like-minded group of people people like you that you can you know you know and even describes it as hey make her a part of this you know it's crazy he's like i'm you know bringing a stranger into this Family. It doesn't even refer to it as a team. It's family, you know, after everything that they've been through. So I just think that's kind of an interesting element, even asking Bruce for help. And even that line from the trailer, I love that, uh, that it's in this episode of like, if you had the option, would you do it all over again? Bringing me in, even though, you know, taking in a stray who only wanted to run away. And Bruce is like, I would do it all exactly the same. Because at the end of the day, it's like he's seen what's come about it. Yeah, there's some trials along the way, but I think it's also because what it meant for Bruce because I think Dick's only thinking about what Bruce has done for him but he I don't think he's thought about the other side of things of like having Robin in his life like having Dick in his life like what that made um how that made his life change for the better kind of gave him something else in his life besides it's just just this whole Batman situation and just the loss of his parents it brought I guess light to the darkness that is, you know, his life, you know. So I, I don't know. That's where my mindset is on that. So I just, I just think that's kind of an interesting. I like that they they are adding that element of Bruce being that, you know, especially now that they've kind of mended fences. He actually can turn to Bruce for advice with this whole situation. So I like that as being like an extra touch for all of this, you know. 
Another surprise for me was dropping Dr. Light because I saw Michael Mosley. I was like, hey, Michael Mosley. Uh, which I, for, I think the most recent thing I know Michael, like he's been quite a few things, but I think the most recent thing was Ozark is the most recent thing I think I've seen him in. But then he was there and then he starts lighting up and I'm like, I was like, Dr. Light? I think because in my head, because um, I was, I was like, because I saw him lighting up, and I was like, is that Doctor Light or is it like BS? I was like, oh, that turns out to totally be Doctor Light. I was like, that's pretty dope. I wonder who busted that. I'm, I'm assuming that was Slade, like slashing his way through that prison, kind of letting. I guess because I'm so curious about certain things because we know like um, because like like I said, my mind immediately is like, oh my god, because we're dropping like you know. Um, dropping someone like Dr. Light, which, you know, makes me just think of the Teen Titans cartoon. And I think in my head, for whatever reason, I was thinking like Dr. Light just had powers came from a suit. I mean, not unless it's like technology under his skin or something like that, but I'm, I'm assuming it's supposed to be, represent the fact that he's a metahuman. Because then thinking about that, maybe I was like, right, because Dr. Light popped up in season two of The Flash. Granted, like the character, it, it, the character's typically male, but uh, in The Flash, the character's female, not unless there's a a lady who takes over the mantle in the comic books or whatever, but because it was she was the Earth Two version of the lady that Barry was dating for a little bit in season two of The Flash, so like yeah, she's a meta human. So I was like, right, so Doctor, I guess because because he always wore the suit in the Teen Titans cartoon, so I was always just I think I just assumed he was just like technology based, but it's like no, it makes sense that he's a meta. Uh, so that's interesting. But it's like why Deathstroke did that? It did my brain start going like, well, or what else are we gonna get? We're gonna get like a Brotherhood of Evil. I'm like. I doubt we're going to get a Gorilla Grodd because obviously that's a Flash thing right now. I mean, he's typically a Flash villain anyway. But then I start thinking like, I mean, that doesn't mean they won't drop like Brain because that's what I thought about the Flash because I thought because I wasn't familiar with the Thinker. So in season four of the Flash, I was like, is he supposed to be because I didn't know his name at the time, but it's simply Brain. But I was like, is that supposed to be him? I mean, obviously, we know the Brotherhood of Evil exists because of Doom Patrol because of um that's what Mr. Nobody, he was trying to join the group, but kind of failed miserably at that. So I'm like, dude, are we going to get, like, are we getting, like, the modern day, like, Brotherhood of Evil type of situation? Is that who's contracting, you know, Deathstroke and now Dr. Light? Like, we're probably going to start dropping some other, like, Teen Titan villains. You know, we're going to get uh, Brother Blood. Like, what's what's going to happen with that? I'm, I'm so interested to see what they do in that regard. I mean, we did kind of get introduced to another villain, Shimmer. I don't know her at all. Um, I love that whole Donna and Corey working together thing. It was kind of neat where Donna was like, oh, you heard from Dick? And Corey's like, no. He's like, She's like, yeah. Donna's like, I thought, you know, he'd call me for help with the kids by now. It's like, do you want him to? She's kind of like, no, no, because it's great. She's like, I put my time in with the, you know, Titan, so I'm good. But part of me is like, I think there's a part of her that was kind of hoping that it's like, you know, you say that, but it, that's the whole thing. And I think that's the big message. No matter how much you kind of say that you walk away, I think, you know, kind of stepping in that realm and that lane of things again kind of made her kind of feel like the old days again. Them being together like that during the whole Trigon thing made her feel like the old days. So I think she's kind of almost, there's, I think there's a part of her that's always kind of be drawn back to it. But at the same time, I think... Their complicated history with the Titans is probably why it keeps, like, Hank, uh, Dawn, and Donna away. So, and it also confirms something, because, like, she's like, well, yeah, half human. I was like, right, I was trying to understand your whole situation. So, I'm like, I'm assuming her mom's, like, Amazonian, and then, like, she, her dad is human. So, I was like, okay, so that explains that whole situation. Okay, so you're, cause, which is interesting, because she's literally just like um, Diana. Because Diana is like half and half. She's half Amazonian. She's half uh, God. So it's just kind of, you know, interesting how that whole situation ends up working out. But still, um, I was curious about that. But I did like them working together to take down Shimmer. And like the fact is that We Are Family is the only song Corey would play. And she's like, Donna's like, come on, just give me some of Donna or something. And then Corey just being an asshole just turns the volume bit me and I was like, okay, I see how it's going to be. So, but they end up taking down Shimmer. And uh, Shimmer's like, oh, I'll see you soon enough. I'm like, okay, so you're going to be probably a consistent villain. I like that because, like, the the trailers didn't hint to that at all. It seemed like Deathstroke was going to be the main thing, but it looks like he's not the only hero that's going to be kicking it. There's going to be other people involved in all of this. Like I said, we're probably going to get other kind of well, well-known well villains. I'm curious if we're going to get any of Hive, you know? Like, uh, dude, like, what was it? Mammoth? 
you know, they pop up frequently, like, all the time in the Teen Titans Go cartoon. I only know that because my nieces and nephew, uh, well, my nieces in particular, one, my youngest niece loves Teen Titans Go. Uh, but other than that, um, I mean, it popped up in the original no Teen Titans cartoon as well, but, like, Hive, like, are any of them gonna pop up, you know? So, we'll see. Gizmo, is that his name? The baby, the high-tech baby dude, and, like, that might be hard to do live-action-wise, so that might be something they even bother tackling, I don't know, regardless. Nevertheless, uh, getting back to it, uh, Corey ends up being taken by someone from Tamarin, and I love that conversation that she has, because, like, you know, Donna's like, oh, it sounds like you're going to be staying on Earth for a while, because for her, she likes the fact is that Earth, you have a choice, you're always being, you always, like, that basically the metaphor that gets used, it's like, oh, you're, there's a metal school, met, uh, middle school, like, Earth is kind of like a giant middle school that you've always got choices in front of, you, you can kind of always be what you want to be type of thing, and I guess on Tamarind, it's kind of like, you are, like, because of her royalty situation, like I said, like, I'm, I'm assuming in this point, she's just a straight-up princess, I don't think she's probably queen of Tamarind, you know, because of, like, the fact that she's off on her own like that, she probably wasn't, she probably went off on her own without letting anyone know, hence why they're grabbing her up now, you know, uh, or maybe it's like, oh, we heard the Trigon situation is dealt with, yet, uh, Corey still hasn't returned, so that's probably why they're coming after her now, but, you know, for her, you know, it's like her status is a royal, you know, which also something I didn't even think about, they could all, you know, once again, just pulling from the Teen Titans cartoon, that must mean at some point, um, her sister might show up, too, that could always be a, a storyline they ended up going down, maybe that might be something they potentially say for later, but I think it's just a thing of, like, Corey feels bound to her position as a royal. It's kind of like because of the bloodline and the family you grow up in, you're kind of you have little choice of who you have. you can't just be yourself. You have to be what other people. It's like she probably has to act like a royal, do royal things. It's like you know because I mean who knows what the royal family is like on her planet? Maybe they're not. Maybe they're kind of assholes, and she doesn't agree with the way the royal family handles things. So that's why she just kind of wants. To, or, or also, but also probably just the whole thing of like here you're not even a princess. You get to just be yourself and not even have to worry about it you know that's the beauty of this whole earth situation for her so i'm interested to see where that whole angle goes i do like that we are getting like a donna and Corey situation I'm, I'm interested to see more of that you know uh you know duoing up you know so and on the other side of things we have hank and don kind of enjoying you know pseudo retirement you know it turns out you know hank is getting clean he's good he's even teaching this other uh dude named ellis who's also you know sober you know helping him ride a horse and stuff like that it's kind of neat it's kind of you know hank paying it forward you know finally stepping away from all that superhero stuff kind of giving time to get clean you know, and it seems like, oh, you know, it's like, oh, you must be bored out here. But, like, Don's like, no, like, you know, you're all the excitement I need. And the fact is, oh, like, we could, you know, Dick says we should stop by the tower sometime. And even Hank's like, yeah, we should. She's like, are you sure? He's like, yeah. But the fact is, that's life, you know. There's always going to be triggers. There are always going to be things that are always going to, you know, tilt you back towards some of your bad habits. But that's just life. You have to, you can't just run away from them. You kind of have to face them because they're always going to be there throughout life. So it's how you deal with them and face them. So I thought that was kind of a neat aspect and kind of showing you how Hank has grown in these three months but it turns out Dawn hasn't quite given up the whole hero thing because she goes out as Dove and stops a meth lab I mean she loves that she gets a guy to call the police he's like yeah there's a meth lab here and he turns around she's like and it's run by three dipshits so and he's like and it's run by three dipshits so come arrest us now she's like oh your mom would be so proud and punches him I'm like okay obviously Hank finds out and he's not too happy about the whole situation because for him, it's a situation of being Hawk and Dove wasn't good. It was dangerous, which is interesting because it seemed like that's what he enjoyed so much. I mean, to be fair, obviously, we know it's something he started with him and his brother. But obviously, for him, it was like, oh, we do such good with it. And obviously, he almost seemed like an adrenaline junkie. It's a type of situation where, well, because even Don says, like, well, the fact of the matter is we started off this as a means of dealing with our pain and you found a different outlet. So that's why, you know. It's like you start doing drugs and stuff to kind of compensate for the fact is to kind of fix that broken side of yourself rather than this being kind of all that needed to fulfill you. You need it more now. And I, she was like, the reason why I didn't bring you along, because like if I get you on this road, it's going to be like a spiraling down to eventually, you know, you relapsing. But at the same time, you have Hank being like, don't give me that BS. Like the fact of the matter is. 
it isn't just me who couldn't let go. It was you as well, you know? And I just thought that was kind of an interesting, you know, look at it because, like, the fact is that you couldn't just walk away from this situation. You still had to kind of, like, there's, you know, that it, it isn't just me that should walk away from this. You as well. I mean, you literally were in a coma because of this whole superhero thing. To be fair, that was more so connected to Rachel, but still, it's all part of that thing of, like, we wouldn't even be in this situation if we were heroes and stuff like that. So it's like, we should have walked away. It's not just me who's in trouble. And it turns out she's been doing this for a while, like, so she gave it about two months before she started doing this superhero thing because she's been doing it, like, uh, once again for, like, a month. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. But before they could really even deal with that, which that's going to be something that's going to definitely be dealt with in the future, uh, I'm curious to see that all kind of circle back around. Because he was like, yo, either you stop doing this or we're done. So he's giving, laying down ultimate, which you wouldn't think it come from him. You would think it would come from... And I like that perspective because, because like I said, because it, he seems like such an... Uh, he got such a thrill from it that's why i find it so interesting that this is where he stands on but because he realizes how damaging this whole superhero thing can be especially because it could stop them from potentially having a family i mean to be fair, that was the whole point it's like do this superhero thing until we get enough money and then we retire and kind of do our own thing start our own family and stuff like that so i'm like it makes sense in the grand scheme of things but before like i said that could be completely dealt with but like I was saying, before they could really get even finishing it, there's a whole situation with Ellis, him coming in like that. I was like, oh, he looks a little sick. What happened to him? It's like, oh, basically, Dr. Light turned him into a light bomb. And it's like, oh, he literally starts like, the light starts exploding from the inside of him. I'm like, oh, I didn't know Dr. Light's powers could be implement it like that i mean i guess that's like when you're able to kind of go as far as you want to you can get things kind of messy and bloody with like that with like a mature rating with the tv show and everything so i just saw that was kind of interesting uh even at one point in the episode blowing up uh dick and um rose when they were in a truck i mean luckily they were able to get away but it's nice kind of seeing like his powers being implemented in that regard it's not just kind of like a oh i can hurt you with light energy it's like no i can literally use it almost like a bomb not almost exactly like a bomb so that's such an interesting thing i didn't even touch on it but obviously there's been other you know deep cut references not deep cut references. i don't know even why i said deep cut uh like even referencing roy harper aka arsenal i'm like yeah that's who Donna's contact is. So I'm curious, like, whether they're, like, you know, heroes are going to get dropped. Because I like the whole thing of, like, you know, Dick being, like, the Titans isn't supposed to be a group of, like, sidekicks. Which even Jason is like, oh, no, we're a whole bunch of sidekicks. That's the whole point of the Titans. Which for Dick, the whole situation is meant to be more of a democracy of like, we have each other's back. There's no like, oh, main hero, psychic situation and dynamics that they all kind of come from. I mean, that, and when we actually think about it in the grand scheme of things, the Titans say it's kind of made up of sidekicks, but it's supposed to be their place to just be like, no, we're not just psychics, we're heroes in our own right and we have each other's back. You know, unlike, you know, it, you know, it's a different dynamic than a hero in a sidekick situation. So I just think that was kind of an interesting conversation, but I even love Dick kind of twisting things around or Jason be like no 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 they they look up to you and everything and Jason's like yeah you know you're right yeah when I lead you know they get proud it's like he starts believe it's like you know Dick is BSing you I mean it's like just showing you how easy like all you got to do is kind of maneuver around you because I even love it being because Jason's like yeah can I go back to Gotham is like no you're literally here because you're on probation he's like what Bruce was basically saying that this is good for you because you you know going out in the Batmobile literally riding your motorcycle in the um the um the manor and everything and he's like what that's me doing what tactic maneuvers or something it's like shut up dude i love him making excuses like that dude i i'm so excited to see where all this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode things are heating up already but really that's all i want to talk about to the next time we meet be happy be safe look like to the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye